Hello, Miss V. How are you doing? Hey, I'm doing great. Thank you. How are you? This says it all. What does it say? I'm back. Oh, yes, we are. And sometimes, y'all, we need to take some time to look at not what we don't have in our lives that's good, but what is in our lives that's bad. We need to look at everything that's wonderful. And I did that yesterday. I was sitting outside in my uh, backyard. And I said, God, let me count why I'm so blessed. All the things. And there was a lot. Um, okay. We are <laughs> along the same. This is a great segue. Along the same um, you know, line of being happy and, and such. Let's talk to Betty White. Um, this is funny because Eric says to me, we're, we're having this little dialogue before we come oh, on. Oh, hi, Eric. I love you. Oh, gosh. He's doing this. He's giving you the peace sign. We, we're like hippies today, he and I. Um, um, he says that she is probably one of his most favorite persons to bring through and to connect us with because he feels that her message is one that the world sorely needs. So oh. we're excited. You know, when I heard Betty that you, and thank you for coming forward. And thank you, Eric, for bringing her forward. But when I heard that you passed on, I was so, I was really sad. Mm -hmm. I was like only talking to my um, daughter, Annika. It's like, God, I can't believe Betty White is still alive. I hope she lasts for a long, much longer time. And then you up and die 17 days before your 100th birthday, girl. What's going on with that? Well, first of all, she's, she says, thank you. She's very gracious, but I want to tell you how she's appearing. She's, okay. <laughs> she's got um, a princess gown on, like you might see in Disney, right? And she oh. whirls around in the room. And underneath the princess gown are army boots, okay? Oh, and my gosh. <laughs> she's got this wand. It's a gold wand. And it has a gold star on the top and she's doing this as she's twirling around oh she just has such a beautiful feel to me and and she's laughing and she says thank you for having me she's very gracious oh that's so sweet so betty th these are um from the community these questions where does your uplifting personality come from uh I, I'm mesmerized by the dimples. I just am mesmerized. Oh, I know. Oh, yeah. And she says, I I honestly will tell you that I came in with it. It oh. was not something that I had to work at. It wasn't something that, well, I had this kind of life and this created it. She says, I chose to come in with it. And why is that? Was it related to any sort of spiritual mission you had this lifetime? I knew that I was here to be the change. I didn't know the change of what, now I do, she says, but I didn't know the change exactly what that meant. But I knew th the minute that I came in that I was different and I could feel and remember my difference. Wow. So now elaborate on the change now that you do know. I was blessed enough and fortunate enough to live in a time when what we experienced towards the later half of my life didn't exist, or if it did exist, it was very covert, very underneath, and almost very benign, she says. You didn't see what you saw in this lifetime as far as the greed and the manipulation and the prejudices, she yeah. said, now they were always underlying, Of course. but I now know that as it progressed, I was able to be part of the transformation because I carried with me that you might know it as energy or mm -hmm. principles of love and a simpler time. Oh, yeah. So why didn't you just stick it out to 100? Is it just because it's a number? It never occurred to me that I would, and she's doing the shuffle exit, that I would huh. exit at, and, and it would be such a hubbub, she says. Mm. I just was ready. I knew it was time. And I didn't go, hmm, wow, 17 days. And then I could do, in my mind, in my life, 
I had done and accomplished everything I wanted to. And I thought, and she's got this little grin with her dimples and it's kind of mischievous looking. She it says, is, yes, I know that grin. I know, that I know. grin. Yeah. She says, let me just be honest with you. I'm keeping them talking. She says, at the 11th hour, I shuffle on out of here and everybody is wanting to know why. And she says, there just isn't a why. There isn't a why. Well, do you think that somebody asked, did inactivity and being sedentary help cause your rapid decline? Did you even have a rapid decline at the end? <laughs> she's spinning. I'm telling you, she's twirl. Eric is like, Eric has little stars in his eyes. Oh. Twirling. And she says, who's sedentary? Who's, who sits still? She goes, my body carried me to 99 years old. Yeah. My mind lives on. My yeah. mind never aged and one thing i want people to know is that where you get your fuel from for your life is in your mind oh gosh yes yes and i had a very, as you think you are i had a very active mind she said whether i was playing bridge or whether i was playing cards poker or whether i was playing bunko whatever you want to call it or doing crossword puzzles she's got her little glasses on she said i exercise the hell out of my mind oh that's so good now uh did you know you were going to pass or was it pretty sudden or was it kind of a shock she says it's not like i had a calendar and i had the date marked down <laughs> about three hours before there was a shift and and i knew that i was going home it wasn't anything like i lived my life it wasn't vibrant it wasn't out there it wasn't for public consumption it was this very soft internal okay let's go oh that's sweet Did, your transition was sweet like you who was the first person you met when you passed over or if you want to continue uh, she has this halo over her head and it looks like a sunrise my beloved alan oh now i understand that you were soulmates probably twin flames i don't know but um you never married how could i top or even begin to find something to compare to the love of my life i waited an entire lifetime for him oh and I bet that was a glorious reunion. She said, in reality, when he left physically, he took a piece of her. Of course. A piece of her heart. And so in that sense, there was an eternal connection. And I won't use the word comparison as I did date other men. Mm -hmm. There was always a sense of being unsettled or incomplete in those relationships. Right. It sounds cliche to say that Alan completed me, but he did. All right. No, of course. Um, let me see. What, was there any reason that you decided to leave uh, on a, a soul level on um, New Year's Eve? <laughs> like, oh, I had enough of 2021 and 2022 might be worse. So bye bye. Or, um, you know, I don't know. What were your thoughts, if any? What she says is, oh my God, I love her. Everybody loves a New Year's Eve party. <laughs> oh God, that's funny. And you probably did have one once you passed over, huh? She said, and talk about the best of the best party. She goes, I was bringing in the new year like nobody's business. Oh, that is so funny. I have um, chills. I, I just love being in her presence. I can't even tell oh, you. Oh, God, that's awesome. You're so lucky. How was your, tell me a little bit about your childhood, Betty. Sunshine, puppy dogs, and flowers. <laughs> a really nice, healthy childhood. No dysfunction. Just, of course, that's probably helped yeah. you maintain that light. What are it you doing a, on the other side? She says that it was a very... Uh, positive reinforcement that she lived with growing up oh. while it was subtle mm -hmm. there was always an underlying current of 
you can do anything you want. Oh, that's nice. And that was the motivation she went into life with. Um, she says, what am I doing? And she's doing this. She's like, like she would be, uh, you know, getting her clothes all like pressed off and like, I'm just getting my bearings, she says. I can imagine this is not, not the right time to ask that question, but it's on yeah. the list, so I must. How do you perceive uh, now the impact of your actions in your life mission on earth? I'm very proud of who I was. Yeah. I'm very proud of the message I sent. I never in my life took a role on, whether it be acting professionally or in my personal life that I wasn't proud of. Oh, that's awesome. Not many people could say that. Uh, I, I'm going to ask this. I already know the answer. Were you a star seed or a light worker or an earth angel or all, all or some of the above? I know that you will understand and resonate best with this. I was an earth angel. Okay. All right. Uh, and you're, then that means you're a light worker too, right? Does it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, did you have to deal with sexual harassment during your career? Somebody wants to know. <laughs> She's got those dimples out again. And she says, oh, my dear, you have no idea. She says this, a lady always holds her own yeah and, and she chuckles betty white she chuckles, as she, she chuckles <laughs> as she says that a lady always <laughs> holds her own and i and she has this like little mischievous again she says i would go toe for toe head to head with the sharpest of them of course i was not here to be anybody's sex symbol although I became one. She's That's laughing. Awesome. Um, she doesn't take herself very seriously, but yet there's this this underlying. She knows who she is, and she's powerful. But she she's full of fun, and she said, awesome. and she's thanking me for recognizing that and bringing that forward. Um, sexual harassment has been around since the beginning of time. And while the light has gotten brighter and the crevices have been begun to be cleaned out, there will always be sexual harassment. It is up to the individual to hold their own, to create their boundaries. We live in a world where it's easy to point the finger, look what they're doing to me. But the other side of that, and I say this with all love and humility, is what am I doing to protect myself from that? Right. Well, totally is my agree. attitude protecting myself that are my actions protecting myself from that? And she wants to very quickly go into she knows she was America's sweetheart. She knows, she says that I was very attractive. I was this girl next door, sexy and, flirt. Yes. And also she wants people to know that wasn't just an act. That was who I was. Mm. And she smiles very broadly and she says, that's why I was such a good actress. I wasn't acting. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Now, do you have a favorite, what's your, your, your favorite thing that you've done? Was it like the movie, The Proposal? Was it The Golden Girls? Was it, I mean, you could name a few. You know what? Without a doubt, she says, The Golden Girls. And you, you all had a reunion, didn't you? Mm -hmm. The ensemble, she says, just being in the presence of those amazing, and she's going like this because here we are. Yeah. And just being in the presence of those beautiful, strong women. She also wants to tell people that she was one, I love this, she was one that surrounded herself with strong women. And on that note, in the flash came Mary Tyler Moore. Oh yeah, because you were on that show too. Mm -hmm. She was one, she, she had big balls, Betty said. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Do you have a favorite Golden Girl or co-worker, co-actor? I always highly respect, I highly respect and admired all of them, but B. Arthur, mm. I loved her balls, her tenacity. And she was this beautiful 
powerhouse in her own right, but yet she enveloped this masculinity that somehow just became sensuality. Yes, I, I, I see that. Love that. Yeah. Yeah. So who was the first one of the Golden Girls or yeah, that, that you met on the other side? And what did they say? It's about time. No, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, Estelle Getty, she says, yeah. was one of the first. But she said Estelle was always so humbling and so gracious. And, you know, she, <laughs> she says, just, just picture the character that Estelle Getty played and just get her in your mind's eye. And that was the greeting she got when she came over, like that snappy, sarcastic. Uh -huh kind of greeting she said and right away we knew it was a, a, a reunion and a bonding oh that's uh, that's wonderful did you uh, uh this is an odd question did you run into any deep state player uh, players satanic cults she says please don't politicize or make my death controversial i know i don't want to do that all right so uh have you reconnected with uh, any of your match game co-stars or was it Jeopardy? I don't know, but she said I played the circuit, she says. Yeah, and you had so many things. If it weren't for game shows, I wouldn't have met my beloved. Oh, yeah. What was it like seeing Alan again? I mean, what was the first thing you guys, he said to you and you said to him? It was very... It was everything every Hallmark movie has ever, oh. ever represented to be. It was like this. If you could picture two flames of a candle mm. and just dancing together, and she's doing this, and it's like, and then the flame became one. Oh, that was so amazing. I was home. Yeah. yeah, you were complete. Yeah. yeah. Which was more fun, Mary Tyler Moore show or the Golden Girls? <laughs> Oh, she says, it's kind of like comparing apples and oranges because yeah. the cast of one was decidedly different than the cast of the other. And you have to remember the era. What might have supported a certain behavior in one era wasn't really supported. And we still, as cutting edge as we were in the Golden Girls, we had to be a little bit respectful of certain things where in the seventies with the Mary Tyler Moore show, it really was balls to the walls in a yeah. different kind of way. There were different missions and there were different meanings. Mary Tyler Moore was the growing up of the collective feminine. Oh, where interesting. Put the suit on, go to work. And the Golden Girls was like, screw it. Been there, love, done that. Here's what love we learned. Love that. Now, deep down, were you upset that you didn't play the role of Blanche or were you happy to play Rose? It seemed like Rose was more fitting for you. But. You know, she says, I told you earlier that I never had to act a day in my life because it was my life. Yeah. Yes, I could have been a Blanche and I was a Blanche in life, but I'm a rose. I've always been a rose. And she said, take that any way you want. <laughs> now, um, somebody said that you did have some quarrels with B, B. Arthur. What were they about? And did you settle those before or after your transition? It was sisterly. It was oh, yeah. nothing that was territorial. I admired B. Yeah. And as I stated earlier, I loved her ability to be both masculine and feminine at the same time. B was a seasoned, talented, giving human being in her own right. And every time I interacted with her on whatever level it was, I always took away the fact that I was respected and I was heard. Oh, that's interesting. Was there one main thing that you guys quarreled about? One thing? <laughs> It was technical things. Okay. It was, you know, who should stand here? And just to put it very simply, you know, what kind of lighting should be here? And, oh, I shouldn't quite say it like that. It was very, if we were directors and I said we were directors, you would understand. Okay. Uh, who was the love of your life, Alan, or perhaps one of your 26 dogs? <laughs> oh, oh. And, and you know what? It's funny because she's just like, the hills are alive you know um 
there, there was no comparison, she says, because Alan was by far the love of my life. My pets, my animals, even globally, worldwide, animals were my mission. Animals were the source of my breath. Oh, yeah. Oh, where did, did your love for dogs and animals in general come from? Growing up, I had dogs. We had we had dogs growing up. It was always the gentleness and the vulnerability of animals that drew me in the purity the essence of them, them just being who they are. We can learn so much from animals if we just paid attention. Yeah. Unconditional love. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. yeah, sometimes they're a lot better than some humans. Uh, all right. Of course, you didn't have a permanent romantic partner after Alan died. From the, that side now, what advice can you give older women who choose to and may spend their senior years without a romantic partner? The best advice I could give is to fall in love with yourself. Oh, yeah. Because once you fall in love with yourself, you begin to ignite an inner flame, an inner essence that then receives everyone as love and it doesn't become about the male female component yeah necessarily or being loved by someone i always knew that i didn't need to be married or to be in a marriage well let me back up i didn't always know that she says my first two mistakes <laughs> um, <laughs> were me being young yeah. and not having a firm footing on why I was here. Oh, I didn't know you had, you were married before. I just said, um, well, so how do, how do you recommend people find that self-love? It's not as easy as reading it in a book mm. or watching it on a, a, a pod or listening to it on a podcast. She says, she says, let me use these words that they'll know uh, or, or, or streaming it. You know, she says it really is about getting in and doing a dance with the pieces of yourself that you don't really like. Oh, in the dark, you will find the light it's and that'll work. Ending, yeah. that we are all capable of darkness she says even me and <laughs> she says that when you can fall in love with that and be comfortable not not exhibiting it but be comfortable saying this is a part of me you begin to create this space for love wow that's amazing wisdom uh did you see the one and only regis philbin philbin on the other side Someone wants to know. Uh, not yet. Okay. Could you feel the love of your fans when you passed? I sent you a bunch of love. I hope you felt. Oh, it. she says I met in context. I met very few of the billions and billions of people that follow me in in physical reality. There wasn't a single moment in my life that I didn't feel love. And that includes as I was carried over and transported home. Wow. What was your transition like? Was it the typical white light tunnel, things like that? Or did you just wake up in a white room or what was it? You know, I'm going to tell you what, I love this woman. She, I know you do. Me too. Do you remember the Mars or the commercial she did with the candy bar? I don't know if it was Snickers or what it was. She had that NFL hat on and she oh was, yeah the hangry yeah, thing yeah right and right. the minute she ate the candy bar she's showing she's replaying that commercial for me and she's saying the transition was that that's what it's like rah, 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 rah. oh oh man. that's funny <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think it's Snickers yeah. my favorite candy bar beside Nutrageous that's my favorite. <laughs> um okay so was there anybody that you really totally didn't like uh, in the, those that you worked with. Um, she, she laughs and she says, 
I no, I won't say I didn't like them. I'll say that maybe we just didn't jive. Or right. Well. Yeah. Um, Was there any? Okay, we'll say it that way. I'll rephrase yeah. it. Was there anyone that you worked with on a set or, or podcast or whatever that the chemistry just wasn't quite right? Um, she's bringing up the name Merv Griffin. Okay. All right. Um, and she's laughing because she says it was just. It was always awkward when I was interviewed with him or found myself in his presence. It was just an awkwardness. Mm. She loves, loves Jack Parr. She said, oh. I loved my experiences with Jack Parr. Okay. What about uh, the people in the proposal? What, what's the guy's name? The main uh, and Oh, the- oh, oh, Ryan? You mean yeah, Ryan? Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> She says he's a beautiful human being. And she's saying it again with those cheeky dimples out. Um, you know, she said he has a great sense of humor. Um, and she said that he was very generous to her in the sense that he was willing to give of himself comedically and also vulnerably to just be oh. open, open with her. That's wonderful. What about Sandra Bullock? Oh, oh. The daughter I never had. Oh, that's awesome. I bet she was devastated. I'm mm-hmm. sure. Um, are there any past lives, any other lives, or future lives for that matter, that most impacted or influenced your one as Betty White this lifetime? Um, she says the most prominent that she can call up right now and bring to us is the life of a Greek goddess. Oh, wow. And she says, excuse me while I change costumes. And she comes back in this long Greek goddess kind of dress with all the pleats on it, if you will. And it's white, oh, yeah. it's got this gold thing up here. And, and she says, as she's lounging, I lived the life as a Greek goddess in this life also. Mm-hmm. I felt very blessed. I come from a long line of gratitude compassion and love i must have done something and i feel like i'm going to cry for some reason oh. i must have done something very very right wow what was your most difficult life a peasant farmer male or female where she's male okay. and she's showing me us eric um that it was hand, uh, hand, a lot of hand uh, work. Um, uh, There wasn't a lot of machine, there was no machinery, everything that was done was done by hand. Um, She was somebody that she she manned the trowel. So what what does that mean? Oh, I'm sorry, man, the plow. Okay. Yeah. Um, And and the plow was nothing more than a horse and uh, pieces of wood that the horse drug to make divots, if you will. She worked very hard, very hard in that way. Where where was this? Um, She's showing me what we would now understand to be south america so i'm not oh. sure exactly where okay um was it the 1800s 1700s 1600s oh time frame um uh, um 1500s maybe okay yeah. wow okay um what do you think of the new earth and the 5d ascension it's about time yeah. Yeah, really. I had my whole life, I lived for the ascension. I aspired to ascend to be the best person that I could be. That is the only true way to reach an ascension. Yeah, to become your true, authentic mm-hmm. self. Yep. Uh, what was the best part or time in your life? Well, there's the obvious answer, she says, but, but let me take you to something that might not be so obvious, the pandemic. Okay, wow. Why? Because as I was privileged to live during this and through this, I began to see humanity and its potential in a much different way. 
And I began to understand my role as a change agent. Hmm. One of the things people should understand about the pandemic, it was meant to shut us down emotionally, physically, spiritually, so that we could recalculate and recalibrate. And if you were the kind of person that survived the, the pandemic by eating Cheetos and playing video games, that's all well and good. There's no judgment, she says. But for a lot of people, they began to find a new way of being. But like humanity, it doesn't seem to be sticking. Ugh, it never does. Like 9-11. Exactly. That's what she's referencing. Yeah. Yeah. And like World War II. Exactly. Well, one day we'll get it. We'll get it. Um, let's see. Well, can you tell us more about your after party show, your greeting transition? Did you have a big old party when you or, or is that yet to come? Well, that was New Year's Eve. Oh, OK, well, yeah. OK, so you had a party. What does a party in heaven look like? She says, you know, this is the thing I want people to understand. And Eric's going, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's tell him. It's a very difficult thing to conceive with the human mind that which is not human. Yes. In other words, we're not carrying our bodies with us, she says. We're carrying the essence of who we are. And so if the essence of who I am is joy and love and compassion, that's what I'm going to be met with. And that's the primary aspect of how I'm going to experience my existence now. She says, if you want to turn this into a teaching moment, let's take an old snarly soul, she says, that crosses over and all they ever did was bitch and moan and carry on and never saw a good. That doesn't mean that they're going to go to the depths of hell and burn and rotten hell. It just means, <laughs> again, our dimples are out. Uh, they're just going to get put into a posse or a pod with people who can infect them with what they need. Oh, that's nice. Compassion and love. Well, is there an actual party like with around the table singing and yay for you and he for she's a Johnny Goodfellow? No. Okay. She says, no. I mean, there could be. She said if you wanted it, yeah. There wasn't. If you wanted that, there could be. Okay. Can you share a truth or truths that you are now seeing having the blinders off? Is there any reference or context for this, she asks? Nope. I mean, is there any great truth that, wow, I didn't know that. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. There are different kinds of truths. There is truth with a capital T, mm -hmm. the big truth that we are all one, that oh. source is where we come from. Okay. And there's little truths with a little t which are perceptions. Okay, interesting. And we are not to imply that our little truths, our little T truths, are all that there is. We must always be open for the expansion of more. Interesting. Like, did you, were there certain beliefs that you didn't, the disbeliefs that you had, like, you didn't believe maybe that there were aliens or maybe you did and maybe now you see that there are anything like that there's way more life than we'll ever be privy to as humans she said of mm -hmm. course there's all kinds of life forms and will i meet them will i connect with them yeah because that's part of the whole picture sure all right so did you did what were your beliefs? Did you believe in UFOs? Did you, I mean, did you believe in God? Did you? I believed in possibilities. Belief. I believed that whatever someone brought forward from their own mind was something worth looking into for them. And I was always the kind of person that if I felt like I needed to know about aliens, I would go know about aliens. Okay. But, but quite frankly, there was enough on this planet to keep me mesmerized. Oh, that is so true. Well, did you ever live on another planet? Somebody wants to know. 
Not to my knowledge at this moment. Oh, have you had your life review? I'm in the process. Okay. Um, let me clarify something about a life review, at least for me. Mm -hmm. This is a very, um, it's a circular process. It's ongoing. It never stops. Oh. Right before you come into this world again, you are once again starting around the circle of review. It's almost as if you're thinking you're packing for vacation and you're checking off. Did I do this? Did I do that? Oh. Wait, let me bring, do, do I have my toothbrush? Do I have the, she said, life reviews never end. That's a, a, that's a concept that the human has created that, oh, I've got my life review. I'm done. It's a circular ongoing process. Well, that's interesting. Uh, do you plan on coming back? why not why not okay it sounds like her uh what's the secret to living to such an old age and, and being still so full of piss and vinegar so to speak and then i have one more question that's good. laugh your ass off laugh oh, your yeah. ass off laughter 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 yeah humor is such a special bomb for the soul really um any oh Here's another one I almost always ask. Is there anything that no one knows about you? Something fun that you can share with us? Like I always bring this Marie um, Curie had a teddy bear sewed in the undersurface of one of her big fluffy skirts. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm speechless. <laughs> oh. <laughs> she said, look, my face is getting red. <laughs> I always <laughs> carried an extra pair of panties in my purse. Oh, that is so funny. Oh, that's great. <laughs> oh, my God. Why not? Because you, know, you never know. <laughs> you never know when you might need them. That's funny. Oh, oh my God. I can't oh, Eric is rolling. Eric is rolling. <laughs> All right. Any final messages or advice for us, Betty? Us peons here still on. Oh my Earth? god! Oh my god! I love you. I love you. Oh, she's awesome. Uh, she, she just says, "Be true to what lives in your heart." Yeah. And marching to someone else's drummer is only going to give you the beat that they have. Get your own oh. beat. Yeah. Wow. Eric, do you have any questions to ask? Or Veronica, do you have any questions to ask? Before Eric's we like, I'm starstruck. Oh. <laughs> In full disclosure, Eric and I have been hanging out with her for a few hours. And Eric is, well, you know, Eric, you know, he's, yeah. and then you get Betty and then there's me. And it's like, dude. Wow. <laughs> the energy in that room must be cray cray. Palpable. I mean, it's just been, thank you. And I'm truly, I've done some amazing things with channeling Eric, but thank you for this, Eric. This has been one of, I'm most proud of this. This has oh, been this amazing. Oh, this is awesome. And I'm proud to have been representing, representing a beautiful icon. And she says this, she's got her little wand and she goes, doink, you're anointed. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Anoint me too, Betty. Oh, Betty, what do you think about Eric? He's one hell of a funny guy. Yeah. And we're laughing. And she loves the fact that Eric is changing the world. Oh, just like and, you. And, and, and had Eric not passed and come home, he wouldn't have had this reach. Yeah. And so she's very grateful to you, Mama, because she can only surmise, because she never had biological children, mm -hmm. she can only surmise what it must have put you through oh, God. to sacrifice one of your own for the whole horrible it's pretty bad and she does surround you with love and she is hugging you and she says your boy is changing the world i still miss him though yeah. but anyway all right you guys check out veronica at veronicadrake.com please subscribe hit the notification bell and like this of course you like it it's betty white yeah all right i love you all thank you betty thank you eric thank you miss v peace out bye